I'm Jess, and it's so great to be with you for a few moments today. Welcome to Kingston Standard Church, our online version. I'd love to invite you to connect with us online or in person. If you're in the Kingston area, come on out. We would love to see you. If you're limited to online connection though, not a problem. Just be sure to check out our website for at-home worship resources. But in the description box of this video, you're gonna find the link to our website. As well, you can always follow us on YouTube and like us on Facebook and be sure to subscribe to both so that you'll stay up to date on all the new content when it's posted. We have a variety of resources available to families and kids on both Facebook and YouTube. So if this is your first time joining us, or if you've been here before, we want to encourage you to go ahead and check that out because our mission is to equip families for the conversations that they have together to learn and grow and follow Jesus. And if you want to touch base personally, then feel free to reach out. You can send us a message on Facebook or you can use the address below. So let's dive in and see what we're going to learn about today. Whenever I'm driving a long distance, it seems like snacking and sipping become a part of the process of staying on track and even sometimes staying alert. So if I ever feel tired, the snack that whips me back right into shape is peanut M&Ms. Now I'll always start the same way with the peanut M&Ms. I'll take one and then I'll pause and I'll drive for a while, find myself down the road and then I'll take another. Seems like a long pause, but then it keeps getting closer and closer and I eat them quicker and quicker and quicker until finally the bag is empty. Now for me, peanut M&Ms are like a scratch and an itch that are never satisfied. The more you scratch it, you just keep scratching and scratching and scratching. But there are times after I've eaten a whole bunch of peanut M&Ms, I don't feel so good afterwards. As a matter of fact, they don't always sit so well after a while. Now, the last few weeks, we've been talking about several aspects of our words, complaining, criticizing, lying. And today we're jumping into the subject of gossip. Now, gossip is one of those things that sometimes causes us to feel great at the moment, but it has that lingering feeling to it sometimes. It can just leave us feeling like we want more, and sometimes it can feel a little bit gross after it's been sitting for a while. Proverbs 18.8 says, Rumors are like dainty morsels that sink deep into one's heart. Too often when we think about gossip and the, the good-to-know mindset, like I, I want to know that, and, and, and our quest for information, they can be like engaging little morsels that keep us coming back and coming back. When we think about gossip, we can think about a few different things. Maybe what comes to mind is the amusing little game of telephone, where you whisper a message down a line of people and see if the message at the end matches up with the message you started with. Seldom is that the case. You could start out with the cat walks up the stairs to enter the pet door and you could end up with he went to the store and bought a hat. One TV show expressed gossip like this when they said we're not ones to go around repeating gossip, so you better be sure and listen close the first time. But when God shares about gossip, it's not as much of a wink, wink, nudge, nudge kind of a thing at all. Check this out in Romans chapter 1, verses 28 to 32. Since they thought it foolish to acknowledge God, he abandoned them to their foolish thinking and let them do the things that should never be done. Their lives became full of every kind of wickedness, sin, greed, hate, envy, murder, quarreling, deception, malicious behavior, and gossip. They are backstabbers, haters of God, insolent, 
proud and boastful. They invent new ways of sinning and they disobey their parents. They refuse to understand. They break promises. They're heartless and they have no mercy. They know God's justice requires that those who do these things deserve to die, yet they do them anyway. And worse yet, they encourage others to do them too. This is pretty intense stuff Paul is sharing with us here. I mean, gossip is grouped up in a category of people who behave foolishly, like someone who's completely abandoned God. They may even go so far as to say they hate God. They're involved in activity that should never be done. They know it's wrong, and they do it anyway, and they drag others along with them. And there it was in verse 29. In the list of all of the nasty things that these people are a part of, they gossip. Now, Paul is sharing with us God's perspective of how gossip is so harmful, so far from the heart of God. It's such a problem, but yet it's part of an activity in life where a life that is pushing away from God continues to allow it to flow. Why is this such a big deal anyway? I mean, some of the reasons why God lovingly condemns gossip are present and obvious to us, but some of them may not be quite so evident. And he shares a lot of these through the Proverbs with us. One of the first ones is that when you're speaking about people, you're actually speaking about him. Now, as a parent, I can understand this. I know I'm not perfect. I understand that my family and the people that I love are not perfect either. But ultimately, when you speak words against them in a very slanderous way, you're speaking against me too. And so, from God's perspective, when we think about it from that angle, we realize that these are people God created, these are people he cares about, they matter to him, and so when we're speaking about them, we're actually speaking against God. And he also continues to hate the world of hurt. This is the place that we tend to think about. We think about how he would hate the world of hurt that people have that are related to gossip. But ultimately, no one is left unscathed by gossip. Most often, we just think about the hurt that's unleashed on the person or the people who are the subject of the gossip. Because in those moments, I'm sure all of us, at some point or another, have heard of some extreme cases where jobs have been lost, reputations have been blown apart, relationships have exploded. And in some of the worst of the worst, we've even heard how gossip has led to people dying. But even if it doesn't have that kind of an impact, it, at the very least, will change and alter a person's view, planting questions about their character, about their integrity, about their motives, about some kind of activity that just might be part of them. Leviticus chapter 19, verse 16, talks about how harmful this is when it says, Do not spread slanderous gossip among your people. Do not stand idly by when your neighbor's life is threatened. I am the Lord. There's a threat that is a part of what happens with gossip. But not only does it hurt the person who is the subject of it, it hurts the listener too. And God knows that it unleashes a world of hurt on people who are listening to the gossip. Proverbs chapter 17 verse 4 says, Wrongdoers easily listen to gossip. Liars pay close attention to slander. There's a statement that really helps us to understand this, and it's a kind of a quip type statement, and it's easy to remember. It's a reality that we understand that by participating, we're showing people how we expect to be treated. It says it like this, what you permit is what you promote. Let me say that again. What you permit is what you promote. By choosing to listen, 
and engage in gossiping statements, it allows us to put ourselves in a position where we're giving people permission to not only talk about those people, but to talk about us. In Proverbs chapter 25, verse 10, it also warns us that others may accuse you of gossip and you will never regain your good reputation. Reputations are on the line as we listen to gossip. And God understands the world of hurt that unfolds as we choose to listen. Most often when we're thinking about the hurt that comes from gossip, we don't necessarily think about the person speaking the gossip themselves. But God understands that a world of hurt is unleashed in a person's life as they speak gossip. Often, they don't even realize how they're churning things up in the world around them by sharing these tasty morsels of gossip that keep them coming back for more. Psalm 41, 6 says, They visit me as if they were my friends. All the while they gather gossip, and when they leave, they spread it everywhere. Proverbs 16, 28 says, A troublemaker plants seeds of strife, or conflict is another word for strife. Gossip separates the best of friends. Proverbs 25, 23 says, As surely as the north wind brings rain, so a gossiping tongue causes anger. It's interesting how talking badly about someone else when they're not around says more about the person doing the talking than the person that you're talking about. And ultimately, there is hurt that happens in that person's life as a result of them sharing that gossip. Recently, I ordered some contacts from my optometrist, and because I couldn't get to where they were, uh, they had them sent directly from the factory. And so when they arrived, I was delighted to have them and uh, was able to put them in right away. And so these daily wear contacts, they have a six-month supply, they're in a little box, and the prescription is listed on the end. And every time you receive them, they are labeled so you know which eye to put them in. Well, when I got them, I started wearing them right away. And so as I was wearing them, there was something that was kind of off with them. It just didn't seem like they were in focus. It didn't seem like they were the right contacts. And I started comparing them to previous prescriptions. They seemed to be off. And so I called the optometrist and I said, I just wanted to double check and make sure that I had the right prescription because it seems like all of the numbers are quite askew from what my previous prescriptions would have been. And so as I read them off, the lady on the line was very polite to say, well, it appears as though somewhere in the process that the stickers for right and left have been reversed. And ultimately, they should have been on the opposite box to the ones that you've been using. So switch the stickers, put those contacts in the opposite eyes from what you've been doing, and see what happens next. So the next day when I put in the contacts in those eyes, of course, everything was in focus and things weren't blurry. They were not kind of moving around in a funky way, creating headaches. There was all kinds of beauty that was a part of that moment because I could see the way I was supposed to see. And all it was, was something that had taken me out of focus. Now, gossip is really something that's kind of challenging to deal with in our lives. We live in a culture of stories, and we value being up to date on things, like the story I heard recently about a lady who was out camping, and she was surprised by the fact that when she went to the outhouse that a bear was in the outhouse with her, and she was bitten in that process. Or the story of public figures who are doing questionable things and we hear about those and it's good to be up to date on those but it causes us to ask a lot of questions. We're glad to know the information that our neighbor shares with us about their opinions and their approach of how they're dealing with the pandemic. And so in the midst of all of that, gossip 
kind of shadily comes to us in a bit of a disguise. And we find ourselves sharing facts or talking about them in a way where we may be saying things like, well, I'm just speaking my mind. I'm calling it the way I see it. Well, that's okay because I can say whatever it is that I want to say as long as it's true, right? But what if we don't always have the whole picture? What if things are slightly out of focus in what we've understood to that point? And things can get out of focus because there are stories that are genuinely helpful information pieces that are important for us to know. But then there are these gossip stories. They cross the line and inadvertently we make the information about us. Sometimes it's moments where we lash out because we're hurt or frustrated. Sometimes we may tell a story in order to bolster our own insecurity, or sometimes we share something because it will help us to feel like we better belong. And when the switch happens in us, what we're ending up doing is building ourselves up at the cost of putting someone else down. Now, let me be clear, this is not just about disagreeing with someone. That's not what we're talking about here. We're talking about that switch that happens inside of us and things start to get all out of focus. In some cases, I would suggest to you some people have not even realized that things are as out of focus as they are. But sharing information in gossip ultimately makes it about us planting all the hurt and the division that we've been talking about so far. When we think about it, we're seeking to find security in information. When we're hurt, what we're looking for is validation. Sometimes it's by shaming or spreading things about the story all around so that people will come over to our side of the opinion. When it's insecurity, it's oftentimes about power and control and kind of superiority of putting ourselves back in a position of superiority so that that person is pushed down the way we have felt pushed down. When it's belonging, sometimes it's just the joy of being in the know and thinking that we can sometimes share information that will help us to feel more included. At the root, all of these share the statement that I become strong because they are wrong or they become weak. And so we lift ourselves up at the expense of others. And when we do that, we lift ourselves up. It's like we swing a whip over our heads and we injure anyone else who is in range of our words. Imagine if in this moment, God is seeking to bring into focus how our words, maybe with no willing or hurtful intentions on our part, are pushing us away from God and creating brokenness in the relationships and the people around us. What would we do if we all of a sudden discovered that? Well, it may begin with confession with God. As we express to God, God, it's not my intention or desire to continue to hurt with my words. Forgive me, I need your help moment by moment to see where I'm making the conversation about myself and create in me some new habits, a new way of thinking. Paul refers to it as the renewal of our mind. Now, this is not necessarily just kind of a, a zap moment that happens where all of a sudden our mind is totally different and our heart looks at things completely differently. Oftentimes, God uses a process of coaching us with new habits, of coaching our mind and our heart into a new direction. And this is not about working harder in our lives because oftentimes we go there. We think, well, I just need to work harder at patrolling my words. But this is really about allowing God to marinate our hearts in his love for us and allowing him to equip us with tools that will continue to shape
the words that result from the security we find in his love for us. For me, it's a simple question that I process. It's, is it helpful? Is it necessary? One author put it this way, and maybe this can be helpful to you. Everything that is said should be true. Not everything true must be said. And as we allow God to renew our hearts and our minds and continue to build new habits in us, they can be helpful tools in that process. But you know what? It also may include some confession with people. Because there may be relationships that you discover have been strained or even broken because of conversations that you may have been a part of. And moments that you wish that you could kind of reel in the words that have landed out there. People that you may even need to have a confession type chat with. Because I believe God sees your story growing more and more like Proverbs chapter 18 verses 20 and the first part of 21. Wise words satisfy like a good meal. The right words bring satisfaction. The tongue can bring life or death. Allowing God to bring the kind of healing, the security and belonging that will eventually come out in words that bring life. Wise words that bring contentment and joy. And he wants to help us be someone who can be honored and trusted even more than we are right now. Thanks again for joining us today. Be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channels, or if you're watching this on Facebook, then you can like and follow us there. And it would mean so much to us if you took a moment to comment, like, and share this video so that others are able to enjoy it as well. And hey, if you're in the Kingston area, come on out. We would love to see you. Please know though that you are loved and that we're praying for you. And we certainly appreciate your prayers too. We'll see you soon.